chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. I'm going to read from the New International Version. So it'll be easier. This is a story that is very familiar to most of us. Um, if we don't know it, we can always read it. If we know it, we can still get something new out of it because God's word is like a diamond. So every time we read it, even though we might have read it a hundred times, the hundred and first time we we'll get something new out of it. And it's the Holy Spirit who actually enlightens the Word of God. Otherwise, the Word of God will be like another history textbook. Word of God will be like another geography textbook. Whatever interest we have, or even a science manual, whatever interest we have, we can find that from the Bible. But knowledge is not going to do anything to us. We need God's Word to go into our heart, not just stay here. So that's what we're going to pray. As we listen, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to really work in our hearts, to really soak His Word into our hearts. We want God to do something special today, right? We don't want just to come in here, have a message and go. So, um, while we were coming here, the Lord gave me this portion to share with you. And uh, that's what we're going to share. This story is about Zacchaeus. We're going to read it, even though we know the story, we're going to read it. And let's read it together. From verse nine, uh, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Verse 6. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. If we are all perfect, we don't have to be here, right? If we are all really, really perfect, we don't need Jesus. Other than God, no one is perfect. But God is so good. He says in His Word, He came to this world to seek and save that which was lost. And Jesus Christ, when He came into this world, He came as a great physician. And He is a great physician even today. Some of us might believe, some of us may not believe, but that's not going to change the fact that He is the Almighty God, all-powerful God. His power has not diminished even a little bit. It is the same as He walked 2,000 years ago on the earth. And he showed his power the same way he is here. Do you believe that he is here today? Yes. yes, because he said his word where two or three are gathered together in whose name? Jesus' name. We're not here to gather a little club, right? We're not here to listen to some music, nice music, to have some party and go. No. The reason why we're here is we want to see Jesus. That's why we're here. We're not here to do some ritual like some religions have, right? We go to some temples, we give this and we give that. And uh, stand in a line, we can get some blessing and go. We're not here for that. We are here to see Jesus. And Jesus says in his word, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is there. That means Jesus Christ is right here now. And we have to really, really, really believe that. When we believe that he is here, then you know what happens? We really get to see Him. We really get to see Jesus through our spiritual eyes when we really believe that He is here. So, it's like the electricity. I walk into a room, we have the switch, all the wiring has been done. The electricity is going through the wiring, everything is there. Or even the cell phone that we use. I have faith on this phone. We all have faith on something, right? I have faith on this phone, that's why when I have to call my husband, I take the number and I dial because I know when I hit that send button, it's going to ring, and he's going to hear it, and he's going to pick up and say hello, right? If I think, what is this little rectangular thing with some glass on it and some pictures on it? 
dial the number, it just goes beep, beep, beep. That's it. How is he going to hear all the way on the other side when I hit this number? How is he going to hear? I have faith in this. One thing I know, even though I don't know, I cannot see how, just the words, even now I don't, we know about light, how light travels, sound travels, all those things, but still, it's theory and we believe that, right? None of us are able to see like the words going like this. And while we're talking, seeing all the words going on the other side, where they are. And then they're picking up, saying hello. We say, ah, right now I see the word traveling through Brooklyn. Yeah, it's going to reach the Bronx. Oh, it's going to cross over that bridge. No, we don't do any of those things. We just know when I pick up the phone, he's going to pick up. And if this can work that fast, imagine how God is. God can come anytime he wants. He can speak anytime he wants. He can do anything he wants. God is all powerful. He's all sovereign. Aren't we happy that we have Jesus to be our God? It's such a great privilege on this earth that God has given us to be his children. And we see over here in this uh, passage with Luke 19, 1 to 10, we see, and there is a man, a short man. His name was Zacchaeus. And he's just going through that place collecting taxes. And when we see tax collectors, they're usually rich people. They get money. So it says in this word of God that he was a wealthy man and he was having a good job. So imagine somebody um, like a governor comes to a place. What will we do? Even if you like him or not, you will give that respect because of his position, right? Say President Obama comes over here. What will we do, even if we don't like him, even if we don't agree with what he's doing? What will we do? Because of his title, what will we do? We will get up and respect him, right? That was Zacchaeus' case. He had a title and he had money also. Imagine what happens to people when they have money. Bill Gates comes, what do you think? We're done. When I say, ah, Bill Gates coming. Do we say that? No. Because of the status, because of the money, most people respect him. That. So, from this we can gather that he was a very honorable person in the eyes of most people living at that time. So now he is hearing, this Jesus Christ, I heard that he healed the blind, he opened the ears of death, he cleansed the lepers. Oh, somebody's hand, we heard, was actually not working, not functioning. Oh, someone didn't even have half of his hand or even the whole hand. All of a sudden the hand came. Oh, this person was born blind. All of a sudden he's seen, oh, this person was late, and then another person says, oh, we brought this person on the stretcher, and we brought him to Jesus, and what happened? All of a sudden he started walking. And Zacchaeus heard all these things, Now Zacchaeus is thinking, I got to see this person. I want to see Jesus. How many of us have that desire today? I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. And God says in his word, if we seek him with all our heart, we see a glass, we look at the glass, so I have quarter cup water. What do we think? When we look at the glass, what do we think? This cup has quarter cup water, right? We're not going to say, oh, it, it is. I have a cup, I'm bringing you three-fourths empty. Do we say that? No, we say quarter cup. When we look at quarter cup, psychologically, we'll think immediately, this only has quarter cup, right? Same way, in our heart, we have a lot of portions that we have. Sometimes we have, okay, education is like my priority. Okay, money is my priority. Or um, some people, for some people, it could be golf. So for some people, it could be video games. For some people, they will not move out of their chair. They will be glued to their computers. So each people have different things that takes the portions of their heart. A lot of times, you know where God sits? All the way at the bottom, in some corner, and he has no room. And you can think how God will feel. He's the God of heaven and earth. He has all power, he is all in love, and he has everything he can offer. You know what happens? We are like sometimes like people who, ha who find some great um, jewelry. Say I'm digging my backyard and all of a sudden I'm finding um, a lot of gold. And I don't know what it is, okay? I'm looking at this yellow thing. What is this yellow thing? Okay, this is hard, this yellow thing. Okay, it has some designs on it. Okay. And I go and put it in some corner of the closet. Then I put all my clothes, I put everything. And that yellow thing is sitting there. And that yellow thing could be worth millions of dollars, but I have no knowledge of it. 
A lot of times we are like that with God. Have you realized that? God has everything we need for this life and for eternity. He has everything we need. But a lot of times we say, Lord, I'm too busy. Oh Lord, I have babies. Lord, I have work. Lord, you know I have to get up early and go to work. Lord, I love you. Good night. Who's the loser, God or us? We. God longs for a relationship, but a lot of times we shortchange ourselves. But let's see what um, this tax collector Zacchaeus did. Very quickly, I will be waiting. So I'm going to very quickly go through this passage. Just go exactly to what uh, God wants us to do. So Zacchaeus now, even though he was wealthy, he had a status, and uh, he was well respected by everybody. Now Zacchaeus now develops his thirst and hunger. He's saying, I got to see Jesus. I got to see Jesus. I got to see Jesus. He's waking up the next day. I got to see Jesus. Oh, is he coming by Friday? Tuesday, I got to see Jesus. Wednesday, I got to see Jesus. I got to do something so that I can see Jesus. But you know what his limitation was? He had money. He had um, fame. He had everything. But he was short. So he knows Jesus is such a popular. He's more popular than any popular, 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 popular. He was so popular because he was the real star walking on this earth. And when he was walking, he had a whole bunch of crowd coming with him. And there was no room. And he knew everywhere he goes, if Zacchaeus is so short, even if he could be a tall man with all that crowd, you think it's possible to see his face? No way. Unless like you have his personal assistant. And he'll go, to, hey, come back. That's the only guy who get to really see Jesus. So nobody. But Zacchaeus, especially when he was so short, he thinks, now, my wealth cannot help me. It's not going to help me get six feet tall. My um, influence cannot help me. My position as a tax collector is not going to do anything because Jesus is not going to say, oh, tax collector. We do that right a lot of times when we see a prime minister or a president or somebody comes. We will even empty the seat of some man of God and say, oh, please sit here. Jesus is never like that. He's no respecter of person. So he does not look at, okay, you're a tax collector. First seat, first row. He doesn't do that. So he knew, now I cannot use my position or my occupation to gain access to Jesus. So now he thinks that he comes up with a plan. All I want is I want to see Jesus. And he says, I'm going to put down my pride. I'm going to put down whatever anybody would think. Even if they think that I'm a monkey, it doesn't matter. I'm going to climb up that tree. Even if somebody says, something is wrong with his mind. This Zacchaeus was walking all these days. He's climbing up trees. doesn't matter. My goal is to see Jesus. How many of us have that desire? doesn't matter. If Susan thinks that I'm dumb, or if Johnny thinks she's got a little cuckoo, or if Moses thinks what happened to this nutcase all of a sudden, all the time reading the Bible and praying, or if somebody else, George, thinks this guy is going giving out tracts, what happened to him all of a sudden? What if somebody else thinks, oh, I don't even want to associate myself with them. It's embarrassing these people are talking about Jesus. Whatever the case may be, is your intention see Jesus. If your intention is to truly see Jesus, God will make himself available to you. That's a promise from the Lord because God says, when you seek me with all your heart, you shall find me. And he is not, he's not a liar. Jesus Christ is not a liar. When he says it, he keeps his word. And that's what happened over here. Matt, uh, there's a tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector too. We're, we're talking with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector and this tax collector was determined to see Jesus. If we are determined 100% and say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go. Lord, my job is not going to stop me. Lord, my money is not going to stop me. Whatever it is, Lord, I am going to press forward. I need to see your face, Lord. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I want to see you. When we really are determined to really seek God and His kingdom first, the Lord says, all these things, do you want food? I will add. Do you want um, clothing? Oh, I will add it. Do you want a house? I will add it. But you don't run after it. God says you run after Jesus. Jesus is all in all. Even if he gives you anything or not, you should be able to run after him. That is love. And this map, the resolve. Tax collector, you know what he did? He ran to that tree. And he climbed up the tree. He climbed up and he sat. And he hid himself. He was now sitting, watching. 
I'm going to be watching Jesus coming. And from far away, he's staying a whole bunch of crowd. And he cannot stop himself. He's thinking, oh, Jesus is coming. I got to see him. Jesus is coming. The excitement. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The anticipation is building up. Now Jesus is passing by. Jesus is God. He sees us. When we have a desire to please Him, desire to seek Him, desire to see Him, He sees us, He knows our thoughts. Even the smallest thought we have, Jesus sees it, good or bad, Jesus sees it. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't have a recommendation. Nobody went to Jesus and said, oh Jesus, by the way, when you pass by this road, there is a tax collector. He's on that tree. Can you please lift your face and show him? Because even if you're walking, you're going to be walking like this. And when he sees, he's only going to see your hair. Not really get a full view. So can you please? He's making so much effort. No recommendation. You know what? Jesus sees your heart. You don't need any recommendation from anybody to go to Jesus. He sees your heart. But we sincerely seek Jesus Christ. With all our heart. With all our heart. Then Jesus says, I'll make myself known to you. God will make himself known to you. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was sitting there. And Jesus is walking. You know how busy Jesus was? Jesus had a uh, program in his mind. And now I'm going to go to this place and finish this. And from here I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to finish this. And from here I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to finish that. He had a mission three and a half years. He was all set to go. But he saw the thirst of this man. He's passing by. He's walking and all of a sudden he stops. Now everybody, they stop with him. What happened to Jesus? All of a sudden he's stopping. Jesus stops and he just looks up. And he said, Zacchaeus, you know how he would have felt? He's just sitting on the tree. This tax collector. Can you imagine the governor of New York or, or your state in Illinois? Sitting on top of a tree all of a sudden. And then somebody comes and calls their name and says, Governor, how he would have felt? His whole heart would have just shook. He said, oh my goodness, he's calling my name. Because he wanted to see Jesus. So he was very happy. Do you think he was embarrassed? No. He was happy. All I wanted was, I just wanted to see Jesus from top of a tree. And you know what Jesus said? Oh, that's what you want? I will give you much more. That's who God is. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, of all that we ask or imagine. God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, of all that we ask or imagine. When we go to a friend and we ask them, do you have five dollars? I just need five dollars. I don't have change. I have my, um, my car with me. But I need five dollars. You, you know what they'll do? If they have ten dollars, they'll try to take change out. Most of them will give you only five dollars. And if somebody gives you ten dollars, they'll expect by Tuesday you give the ten dollars back. You know how Jesus is? He gives you more than you ask or imagine. That's how generous our Father is. He gives us more than we ask or imagine. And Jesus, he walks by, and he stands there and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I want to come with you and stay with you in your house. Imagine that. This guy wanted just to see Jesus. All he wanted was to see the face of Jesus. He wanted to see who? Is this man who does so much miracles, who did so many things, who is he? Who is he really? I want to see him. He was so desperate, desperate to the point, he was driven to climb that tree. He laid down his pride, laid down what others will think, laid down his stuff. Now he said, I want to pursue Jesus. The Lord is speaking to us this afternoon. The Lord says, are you really seeking me? Lay down your pride. You lay down your pride. Lay down what others will think about me. Really go after Jesus Christ with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength. I will make myself known to you. I will reveal myself to you because he's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. He is so alive. We're not worshiping some dead God who died 2,000 years ago and we have a shrine over here. But he is alive. He is walking among us. We cannot just see with our eyes, but he is here. And he's being glorified. And that same Jesus who walked by that road where Zacchaeus was, he's walking by us today. He's walking by us. Jesus is walking by us today. 
He's trying to say, who really wants me? Who really loves me? Who is really looking for me? That's what Jesus says. When he's walking, he's saying, do you really love me? Do you really want me? Do you really, really? That's what Jesus is looking for. He's looking for real love from a heart. Real seeking. True inward desire toward the living God. And that's what Zacchaeus had. Now Zacchaeus was a sinner. Zacchaeus was not a saint who said, Oh Lord, I want to see your face. Zacchaeus was not like that. Zacchaeus was a sinner. And we see that when Jesus looked at him, the great physician went and stood for that one man, Zacchaeus. Now we are not all a crowd before the living God. I have five children. And I don't look at the five children as my school children, you know, I'm a teacher. So when I go to school in my classroom, you know, I have 30 children, 40 children, whatever. They're all my class children, right? And I teach them what needs, special attention we give, we do all those things. But when I come home, there's a big difference between my school children and my own children. And I don't go to a five and say, hey kids, come on over here. What do you need? Here, take it. Sit all of you. Do I do group lessons? No. Each child is so precious and special. So each child, I deal with them individually. And I know each one of them. I know who likes biryani, who likes pizza, who likes juice, and who does not like yogurt. Who likes to sleep this way? Who likes to cover themselves with a sheet? Who does not? Who likes this pillow? Who does not? Five children. Only five. <laughs> but I know each one of them. God, he's God. He's not human. And when I see, when I talk to my daughter, I don't think, oh, I'm all confused. I have five children. I don't know what she wants. I don't know what he wants. Everybody's like talking at the same time. Be quiet. We don't do that. We know. When my little one cries, I know it's my little one. We can have ten babies there, other people's children. When my child cries, I know it's my child. And out of my five children, I know each one of their voices. In the same way, nobody can come and call over the phone and pretend to my, my husband and talk like him. I know. You know why? It's not just the voice. It's not even just the tone. But it's the life that goes with the voice and the tone. So even if somebody tries to mimic my husband and call, they cannot do me. You know why? Because of the relationship I have with my husband. Because I talk to him every day. Talk to him a lot. I know him. Basically, I know him. So nobody can do me. Same thing with my husband too. So we have that relationship with Jesus Christ. We know God. We get to know God. If I say I'm married to my husband, and then I just say hi to him once in a while, and then maybe write some emails, and then don't talk to him, then anybody can come in to see me. Right? Because I really don't know him. But if I really know him, if I say I'm his wife, then I really need to know him. And he needs to know me. If I say I am the daughter of my parents, then I really need to know my parents. I need to know my mom's voice. I know my mom's voice. I can be hundred women, thousand women. I know my mom's voice. Same goes with all of you. The reason why I'm giving you these very, very simple, basic, day-to-day -day illustration is God is our Father. He knows your voice. And he knows my voice. When we say Jesus, immediately he knows, oh, that's my daughter calling. He says, what do you want? What happened? Immediately. And you know, even with us as mothers with the children, when little one, they fall or they call, you know why they call. You know when they call, when they're complaining. You know, it could be the same word, mommy, right? When they say mommy, when they say mommy, then you know, that's a complaint. When they say, mommy, you know, they need help. It could be the same mommy word, but the way they call, you know why they're calling. They don't even have to explain to you. When they call, so sometimes I knew they got hurt. You know? You know you gotta just fly and go to them to get them. God knows much more than that. And I'm just a human. You're just a human. We're just humans. He's God. Even our sigh, He knows. When we sigh and we say, Lord, it's too much, I cannot bear. God knows that. When we have sorrow, we have no words to even speak, we cry, God sees that. God knows everything. Zacchaeus didn't have to say anything. God saw the heart of Zacchaeus. And he knew, and he looked at Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, you just want to see me? I'm going to give you much more. 
not just a vision. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to go with you. And I'm going to live with you. For that night, that time, I'm going to stay with you. What a privilege. God gave much more than he asked or even imagined. For him, sitting there, he could have possibly, if I can even see his face, that'd be enough. That was his longing, but the Lord gave much more. Not just his face. He talked, he walked, and he went and he stayed. What a privilege. What a privilege. I would be so happy my feet wouldn't be on the floor if Jesus would just walk and come. But you know what? He is with you. He is with you. Are we really recognizing Zacchaeus was not the only privileged person. We have Jesus living in us now. He is with us. He talks with us. Do we take the time to talk to him? Do we really take the time to talk to Jesus? To get to know him? Is he talking to me? If I talk to him, then I will know that he is talking to me. And you know what? Jesus went with Zacchaeus without Jesus telling a word. You see Zacchaeus over here. He said, Lord, I will give this. Lord, if I cheated somebody, Four times, Lord, I will do this. You know what? That's the conviction that came because Jesus came. That is a definite mark of a person who really saw Jesus. If Jesus sees us, we will never be the same again. For prayer, please contact us at prayer at LBFL International Ministries dot org. That's prayer at LBFL International Ministries dot org. Or you may phone us at 001-845-360-0534. Once again, 001-845-360-0534. You may write us at LBFL International Ministries PO Box 966. Goshen, New York, 10924, USA. On the web, please visit us at www.lbethelinternationalministries.org.